Hello guys, welcome back. So we're going to continue from where we stopped yesterday. So today we're basically going to uh, turn an LED on using register level code. But before we do that, there's something I want to introduce us to. It's kind of like a crash course on um, some binary operations. So let me show you guys what I want to explain before writing the code. It's about bit shifting. So bit shifting is a very interesting concept, it allows you to manipulate binary numbers and it's very useful when uh, dealing with registers. So we have the left shift operation and the right shift uh, operation. Um, we're going to be using the left shift for today and we're going to use it a lot. So let me explain what uh, these shift operations actually do. Suppose we have a binary number. We have zero, 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 yeah, eight zeros. So we have bit zero, bit one, bit two, all the way to bit seven. So if I want to change this binary number, I want, I want to create a particular binary number. Uh, let's say one, zero, 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 zero. So if I want to create this binary number, I basically just want to put bit one at position seven. I, I want to put a one at uh, position seven. Yeah, I'm putting a one at position seven. So I might as well just say one left shift seven. Because this, this is a symbol for left shift operation. Conversely, if I want to create something like zero, one, zero, 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 zero. I might as well just say one left shift six. And if I want to, if I do one left shift two, then that's going to give me zero, zero, one, then zero, 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 zero. So that basically just means putting logic one at uh, position two or bit two. So putting logic one in that location is one left shift two. So uh, that, that's basically it. If you want to put in any other position, you just need to do one left shift that uh, particular uh, bit or that particular position, then you will create um, the appropriate binary number. So that's just one more example. So if we want to uh, create another binary number that is, let's say zero, 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 that's four zeros, then this is five, six, seven, okay, let's say one. So this is essentially one left shift zero because it is the bit zero or the position zero that we are putting a logic one at. So let me give you a few seconds to process this. Yeah. So that's, that's basically what uh, I wanted to introduce to you guys. So I think we can now move to the actual writing of the code. So let me take us to the Arduino IDE that we are familiar with. The Arduino IDE, okay. So we already have our requirements for this simple uh, application. What we want to do is simple turn, we want to turn um, P an LED, turn an LED connected to PB5. We want to turn it on, turn an LED connected to PB5 on. So we know what we have to do. Now, uh, we're going to be writing this in a C style uh, way of writing code. So, you know, Adreno provided setup and loop, but uh, in a C style, this is what we're going to do. So that's the C style. You have the main function. That's where all your code goes. So, uh, basically, the Arduino does this in the background. It has this uh, main function, but it just uh, kind of hides the um, implementation. So it provides you with setup and loop. But what we're going to be writing, you would see 
uh, the reflection of setup and loop there. So it will allow you to have a feel of what uh, the similarities between the Arduino code and uh, standard C code. But the Arduino uh, way of coding is also like C, uh, just that they've already added some libraries and uh, all sorts of functions. So here we're going to be writing things from scratch. And in every uh, embedded uh, software, there's, there's always a loop. The loop is important because that's where most of the code goes. That's where the CPU does a lot of processing. So the loop, let's write it while well, one. So that's the loop. So this, this, this is basically an instruction that will keep uh, running forever. So for now, we're not putting anything there. So this is equivalent to your Arduino loop. So the Arduino loop function is basically a while one loop or a forever loop. And the setup function is just something that is executed once. So what we want to do today is just uh, configure PB5 as an output and turn it on. And we only want to do it once. So nothing goes into the loop. So our setup, In the previous video, we already said um, what we are going to do. We wrote it down. So let's go back to the data sheets as a form of um, refresher. So what we're going to do is the DDRB, we're going to make DDB5. We're going to put a logic one there and that will make uh, PB5 an output. So let me write that in the rock book again. So um, we have we have our uh, DDRB. So we want for DDRB, we want the DDB five to be set. Then the same goes for the port B register. We want port B five to be set, right? Yeah, so if you look at the data sheet, you notice that DDB5 is the fifth bit of the DDRB register. So it's at uh, position five. So if I want to set only this DDB5, all I have to do is one left shift DDB5. Yeah, and if I want to set port B5, all I have to do is just one left shift port B5. Yeah, so uh, DDB5 is actually um, defined as five. Same goes for port B5 is defined as five. So in both cases, one left shift DDB5 will be translated to a particular binary number and with the explanation of left shifts, uh, you guys should know by now the binary number this will give. This will give us, um, this is the uh, um, bit seven, this is bit six, this is bit five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yeah. Likewise, one left shift ports B5, it's going to give us the same thing, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Wow, that's interesting. So all we just have to do is feed this into our uh, DDRB and port B registers and we're already done with the code. But um, I wouldn't just want us to put them uh, directly into those registers. And um, the reason for that is, uh, especially when you're dealing with complicated microcontrollers, you wouldn't just want to be writing the values directly. It's better to use an OR operation. We know OR is neutral. If we OR um, the original register with this value, um, mostly we're going to be ORing a lot of things with zeros. So their status will remain the same. The only thing that will change is the one that we are ORing with one, which is at position five. So um, let's go back to the Arduino IDE. Oh, okay, the data sheets, just to show you again. 
So putting logic one at spots B5, putting uh yeah, logic one at DD B5 as well. And we're using left shift operation. So back to the Arduino ID. So what we have to do is very simple. So to turn, to configure the PB5 as an output, we're doing one left shift DDB5. Okay, firstly, I'll write, I'll do a direct write. So DDRB. So we've done DDRB equals one left shift DDB5. So what does this do? This will set PB5 as outputs. Yeah, but well, now we want to turn PB5 on. So we're going to do ports B equals one left shift ports B5. So this will turn PB5 on and our program is done. Uh, but I said something earlier about a direct write to the registers, and I'm going to come back to that. But let's try and compile this. But for that, go to File, Preferences, and make sure that this, this compilation uh, box is ticked. Then, then click OK. Now you can uh, verify, you can compile this. So it's compiling, compiling, compiling. All right, it's done compiling. So one thing you need to do is, okay, you can extend this up a bit. Now you will scroll up. Um, where, okay, not up. Now you will look for the last path. You know, there's so many things displayed uh, in this segment, this block area. So the last path, just copy it. The last part, which ends with dot hex, copy it, copy it, just copy it. Now go to Proteus. Now let's go to Proteus. So what we need basically is just the Atmega uh, microcontroller. Let's put it here. Let's enlarge this a bit. Yeah, and then we need an LED which will be going to PB5. Yeah, then the negative end goes to ground. All right, so ground. Now, double click on the Atmega microcontroller. Now this, this part that says program file, you paste the path that you copied in this area. You paste it there. Once you've pasted it, click OK. OK, now run the simulation. As you can see, the LED turns on. It's a blue LED, it's already on. OK, yeah, so the program works well. So let's go back to the code and um, have a few discussions. So yeah, that's that's it. Just to turn the LED or nothing fancy. That's that's what we planned. Um, but I said that us doing a direct right, it, it makes me feel a bit unsettled. So I like putting R and R. Yeah. So if you notice, this won't really have any. It won't have much effects. And um, the reason is this, let's go back to the data sheets. If you check, the initial value of the register is zero. So if I perform all operation, all operation on the left shifted value, then it's going to be the same. Let me go to the data sheets. Um, let me go to the rough sheets rather, the rough sheets. So now DDRB, DDRB and ports B, they are all zero, they are both zero by default. All right, they're both zero by default. But now in my code, I just modified it to DDRB or or equals um, one left shift DDB5. So what does this actually mean? This will be translated 
uh, this will be translated to DDRB equals DDRB or one left shift DDB5, which is essentially saying you are doing an OR of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and you are ORing it with this. And if you check the previous video on OR operation, your results of this OR operation, of this OR operation, is still going to be this value right here, this value. And it will be stored in, it will now be stored in the DDRB. So you guys may be wondering, this is of no use, but the importance of this, it's actually good practice to do this all operation because if the initial value of the register is not filled with zeros, if it contains maybe ones at some location, maybe the default value is like one, zero, one, 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 probably the manufacturer of the microcontroller had those values programmed as ones because they are serving a purpose and they probably and they don't want you to tamper with those values. So if you perform an all operation, um, only the bits that you want to be affected would be odd with um, one, like for instance, let's assume, okay, how many bits is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Let's assume that is the initial value of the register. And now we only want to change the first bits. We only want to change the first bits. So what we need to do is one left shift zero. And one left shift zero is zero, 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 one. So if you perform an all operation, an all um, operation, this will give us zero or one is one. So we have gotten, uh, we've already made this uh, bits zero, to change from zero to one, that's our um, desire, but we don't want to affect other bits. So if you perform all operation on the rest, there'll be zero, zero, uh, one or zero is one, one or zero is one, one or zero is one, zero or zero is zero, one or zero is one. So if you compare this, let's call this C, and, and this is A, if you compare A and C, you notice that the difference between the two of them is just the bit zero, which was, our intention to change for well, every other thing is normal. So we have not tampered with other bits. We've only changed the one we're interested in. So that's the importance of me using this or, even though now it might not really be necessary since the initial value is zero, but it's good practice. Because if you are working with more complicated microcontrollers or even some um, registers that don't have an initial value of zeros, you wouldn't want to tamper with the initial value. You only want to tamper with the bits you want to change using your left shift operation, then your all operation ensures that you don't tamper with anything. So that's the importance. So guys, let's go back to the um, Arduino IDE. So that's basically it, that's just the code to turn it on. So you guys can try and write an Arduino code for this and um, run it. If we run this now, if we run this again, we can see that this is the program uses only 138 bytes of the flash memory. And oh, that's actually quite nice. Try and write the same thing in Arduino, compare the uh, size uh, differences, and you'll be surprised how uh, fantastic writing uh, register level code is, because you end up using less space since you're dealing directly with the hardware, no form of um, intermediary, okay? um that's basically it for today an exercise will be given later but i hope you guys understand what we've just done so that's 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 all right thanks